welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to JWF Monday Night Ignition. I'm your host, Silver Spoon, joined by the man who's going to be hungover this weekend. It's Captain Tits. And the rest of you are, too. So get some pickle juice, bring your Pedialyte, and get ready for the most headache show in the world. That's right. This Sunday, JWF Hangover coming to you live on the Fight Boys YouTube channel. And Tibbs, it is an absolutely stacked card. We've got the War Wizard versus the man with the body of steel, AJ Steele. We've got our tag team championships defended as the Rising Suns take on the wild-eyed Southern Boys. And then, of course, that epic fatal four-way where your son, Chuck Tibbs, defends his championship against not one, not two, but three other competitors. And you know that is going to be the first real test of Chuck's reign. Absolutely, Sills. I have tried to stack this card with as much impactful force as possible just to give everybody an excuse to drink. That is right, but there's one match we still do not know. Our captain's champion, the Dylan, will be defending that title that night, but we don't know against who. You, of course, have given him the option to choose any opponent of his wish, and let's be honest, Tibbs, in the past, he's faced Kazuchika Okada, he's faced Hollywood Hulcher, he's faced just about everybody he could face, so I don't know who Dylan could possibly be thinking. Not sure, Sills, but I've been told that he's out. He's finally made up his mind, and he's going to come down to the ring and announce his challenge. All right, well, let's go down and hear what the Dylan has to say. Well, well, well. You know, they say that good things come to those who wait, and I am happy to say that that is correct. You see, after weeks of waiting and waiting and beating down every single person, that has come my way, I have finally gotten the chance to turn the open challenge around and pick my opponent. Thanks to Captain Tibbs finally admitting that he can't find anyone else to actually prove a challenge. So, without further ado, the next person that gets to be choked out by me is... Oh, Tibbs, there it is, the music of Blake Tanner, the man known as the Bee, coming out to the ring. And you know Blake Tanner has been a thorn in the side of the Dylan lately. Absolutely, Sills. I wonder what he's come out to say. Well, let's hear it. Oh, no, no, Dylan, please, please. Don't, don't let me interrupt you. I just came out to listen to this great promo. I love a classic Dylan promo. There is nothing better, there is nothing just as captivating as hearing you come out and robotically talk about how you are better than everyone else and you are the true champion of the JWF. Oh, and I love it. When you, when you insult Tibbs, my favorite part. Uh, I mean, you come out, you hit your boilerplates, you go off on tangents, I love it. But, why don't you skip ahead to the end, huh? You already said last week that you're fighting someone who really deserves a beating, right? Well, I don't know of anybody in this company that you would want to beat down more than this guy standing right here in front of you. You know something, Dylan? It's all right. I know what you're going to say, and I accept your challenge. I accept the opportunity to head down to that ring and take a grand beating from you. Because if there's one thing that I've proved over my tenure here in the JWF, it's that you can beat down Blake Tanner within an inch of his life. You can lock me in every single vice or hold that you've got, and you could even damn near kill me. But there is one thing that you can't do, Dylan. And that's outsmart me. So, hey, you want to beat me down at Hangover, good luck. But just so you know, during that beating, I will outsmart you, I will outwitch you, and then I will find any way possible to take what deserves to be mine. That wonderful little captain's championship. Oh, Dylan, I love that look on your face. I love that look that says, oh, you know I'm smarter than you. 
I know when there's a target on my back to put my back up against the wall. But Dylan, you're so dumb that you just have to stand out here in the open every single week. What in the world's Blake Tanner talking about? But Tibbs, Tibbs, look behind the Dylan. Look behind the Dylan. It's Gazi. It's Blake Tanner's associate, Gazi, and he's got that steel chain and oh, went for the big headshot with that chain. But Dylan ducks and oh, nails him with the low blow. And look at this, not even breaking eye contact with Blake Tanner before tossing Gazi to the ground and locking him in the vice. He has got him in the vice using that chain to choke out Gazi. Dylan is snapped. This is it, Sills. It looks like Dylan. Has finally gotten the better of that bastard Gazi. That's right. It looks like he's finally releasing the hold, and he has got that microphone. And I think he has a reply for Blake Tanner. Face you. Why on earth would I want to go into Hangover to face a glorified manager? How about this? How about you take your sense of self-importance, walk to the back. Because at Hangover, I'm going to beat the shit out of this motherfucker. Again. Well, Tibbs, I, I guess I guess Dylan's made it clear this Sunday he is facing off against Gazi. He's taking on the Nightmare, and Blake Tanner looks furious. Oh, Sills, you know Blake Tanner came out. He came out thinking that he had that shot at the Captain's Championship in the bag. And Dylan turned it around on him. It looks like he's going after Gazi. That is right, and you know that can't be that's gonna be a can't miss match. Last time Gazi was in a ring, let's not forget, was against Scotty Moore back at Summerfest. And Gazi broke the man's damn arm. Gazi is vicious, and you know what? I know we're supposed to remain biased, but if I had to make a prediction, I'd say that the Night Terror is walking out this Sunday with the Captain's Championship. So I think he's got a great chance at, at finally being the one that defeats the Dylan. I think that Gazi's, uh, his ferocious and vicious style will definitely be something that the Dylan will have a hard time adapting to. That's right, but one man who's also been having trouble adapting to his opponent is Hollywood Hulcher, the man who is now 1-2 in his best of seven series against Danny Roanoke. And of course, we know back at Summerfest, Hollywood Hulcher had Danny Roanoke's number, but ever since, Roanoke has had that upper hand, and Hulcher has just not found a way to get over him. Not at all, Sills. He's got a he's got a mounting lead against him with Danny Roanoke's two wins. I, it's going to be hard to come back from that. And right at this point, he is just trying to right the ship. That is right, and he is actually backstage with one of our top interviewers, who's curious how he's going to handle Danny Roanoke during their match this Sunday at Hangover. Let's have a listen. Ladies and gentlemen, Don the Don McDonald backstage here with the man who's down one to two in his best of seven series against Danny Roanoke, the man known as Hollywood Ultra. Now, Hollywood, I got to know, this Sunday, it's the next match. How do you feel heading towards your clash against Danny Roanoke this Sunday at Hangover? You know, McDonald, I feel good. Yeah, I feel real good. Uh, you know, I, I bet you thought that I'd be coming out here and saying that uh, because of Danny Roanoke, he's got two and one against me, that I'd be pretty, uh, pretty, pretty bummed right now, be trying to find something, find something that I could do to even the odds. But I just realized something with these matches that I've been in with Roanoke. And you see... He's been proven one thing to me in every single match we've had. He's proved that he comes into each and every single one with a plan. He's always thinking, he's always got some idea of how he's going to pull one over on me. Whether it's reversing a crossbody into a black mirror, catching me out of my own skyliner and power bombing me into a turnbuckle or a table, well... Danny Roanoke has always had a plan. But, you see, there's a bit of advice that I remember Danny telling me a long time ago, back when I was training under him, and that's everybody has a plan until they get punched square in the damn face. Anyone 
can come into a match with some kind of clever scheme or how to escape out with a victory. And <laughs> that is why I think this Sunday I'm giving Roanoke no opportunity to escape. This Sunday, I'm going to take all of Roanoke's plans and throw them in the garbage because I'm going to put up four walls of pure solid steel around us and give Danny Roanoke no other option but to fight me. There's no being clever or being smart because this Sunday, it's going to be two men enclosed in steel with only one option. Fight or fall. Danny, this whole time you've been bragging to me about laying all my cards out on the table. You've been claiming that I've shown my hand and I've wasted all of my moves just to get one single victory. And I think you were right on the money. I've shown you all my moves. I've done just about everything I can to you in that ring. And you've always found a way out of it. But this Sunday, there's no getting out. There's no escape. I'm going to use all of the tools in my arsenal to beat you down and pin you to that match inside one of the most devastating structures in professional wrestling history. I'm going to take you out inside of a steel cage. Oh. Well, Tibbs, look at this. A steel cage cage match the next in the best of seven series i mean i know that danny roanoke said every match a different stipulation a different uh, i i guess uh, mental state that hollywood halter had to find himself in but it looks like hollywood has already laid the, laid the cards on the table he wants a damn steel cage there you know what, Phil? Sometimes it is the right strategy to put everything out there on the table so your opponent can see it and i think that's exactly what hollywood halter just did that is right, Tibbs, and let me tell you something, it's going to be an absolute brawl when those two face off, and it is going to be a brawl right now as we go down to the ring to see David Honey Mustard Jenkins, one of your favorites, an absolute legend of the business, taking on the king of the hill himself, Robert Hill. And you know something, Robert Hill, he has been hungry ever since coming to this company back at Summerfest. Absolutely, Sills. <laughs> Robert Hill has burned down <laughs> a path straight through the JWF like a house of fire. And it doesn't look like he's stopping. But right now, he's got a veteran in the ring right against him in David Honeymuster Jenkins. I mean, that's right. You got to remember, last time Robert Hill was in this ring, he took on Funky Flossie, beat him in about five minutes. But Funky... Funky's a, uh, a youngin', just like Robert. I do not know if David is gonna give him that luxury and that bell goes ringing. Oh, look at that, David coming out with just a flurry of offense. Oh, but wait a minute, Robert. Robert going for the gas lighter, but Honey Mustard flips it around into a beautiful suplex, bridging up for a pin. One, two, ooh, Robert kicking out. And Tibbs, you can see Robert Hill looks furious. I'll be honest, I think that's the first time Robert's even been able to be pinned at all since his debut. And it looks like it took everything out of Honey Mustard to put him in that situation. Honey Mustard is going all out right from the start, trying to get a quick win over Robert Hill, which it doesn't look like he's been able to do yet. That's right, you see Robert just spearing Jenkins out of his boots, laying him down onto the mat and brutalizing him with some massive shots to the skull. You can see the referee forced to separate him. Jenkins finally getting up and ooh, Robert hits a running knee straight to the face before picking him up. Ooh, and Tibbs, he's got him locked in. Poor Jenkins, he tried hard, but he cannot escape the gaslighter, dropping him on his head. Beautiful double underhook. DDT goes for the pin. One, two, three. And Tibbs, Jenkins might have been a legend, but to a man like Robert Hill, it doesn't matter if you're a rookie, if you're a legend, nothing's going to break his stride, I don't think. Not at all, Sills. It looks like we might be in for a rough season of Robert Hill. That is right, Tibbs. But now I'd like to move on to JWF Hangover. And what I think is 
Honestly, one of the most peculiar matches on the card, and it's AJ Steele versus the War Wizard. We remember a couple of weeks ago, the War Wizards were fighting for their opportunity to, of course, face our tag team champions this Sunday at Hangover, and things to be, seem to be going their way until AJ Steele interrupted. That's right, Sills. AJ Steele, of course, hosting an impromptu episode of his whatever kind of show you like to call it, Wrestle Wars, <laughs> interrupting the match and allowing the Wild Eyed Southern Boys to get the win over the War Wizards. That is right, Tibbs. But, of course, AJ Steele got his comeuppance last week when the War Wizard bought out his spot and said, you know what? How about instead of Wrestle Wars, we have Wizard Wars, and let me tell you, one of the most entertaining segments in JWF history, but I know for a fact AJ Steele certainly wasn't entertained by it. <laughs> well, I don't give a shit, Sills. It was fun as hell. That is right, and AJ Steele is backstage right now to respond to the War Wizards' challenge to a match this Sunday and to hear his thoughts on Wizard Wars. Let's have a listen. Hello, everybody. Honeypot Mick Multi Man Slammer Jam here with the man who was challenged to a match last week by none other than the War Wizard, AJ Steele. Now, AJ, I know the relationship between you and the War Wizard has been contentious to say the least over the past few weeks. Did you think it would lead to this? Well, uh, look here, Honeypot. I will answer that question. I will answer it honestly because that's the kind of man I am. No. In all honesty, I never thought things would go this way. I did not expect such outrage and backlash from me coming out on JWF Ignition and doing what any good hard American would do, and that's be honest. Look, I did not expect that the, this war wizard would have such, such vitriol, such hatred towards a man who called him out for his bullshit. But you know something? I guess I should have expected it, Honeypot. I should have expected it. No one likes to hear the truth, and it appears that the war wizard just hated to hear the truth about him and his damn immigrant boyfriend, Jeremus. And thus, the war wizard retaliated. He retaliated by taking my show off the air, taking money out of my pocket, and food off my plate. And if there's one thing I've learned in professional wrestling, it's that you never take food off another man's plate. So this Sunday, I'm more than happy to step into the ring with Mr. Wizard and show him why you don't mess with AJ Steele, why you don't steal another man's show, and why you definitely don't take the damn bacon off my plate. And you know what? After that, I'm gonna sue the damn war wizard for copyright infringement. The man blatantly stole my show, stole my ideas, and he ain't gonna survive what I'm gonna do to him after that. Because I got a body of steel, baby, and like any hard American, I'm gonna use that body to put the hurt on him this Sunday. Well, Tim's strong words there from AJ Steele, who just, he came out, he, he said it blatantly right out. He wants to put the hurt on the War Wizard this Sunday. But, Tim, let's be honest, the War Wizard, he is one tall, big, strong, whatever you want to call him, son of a bitch. And I do not think things are going to be easy for AJ Steele. Not at all, Sills. AJ Steele thinks he's going to come in here looking for an easy win. He's not going to have it. The War Wizard is a veteran, not only in the ring, but of the Wizard Wars themselves. This man will not go down without a fight. That's right, and speaking of a man who will not go down without a fight, let's talk about one of the men in the Fatal 4-Way this Sunday. Griffin Clouds, a man who came into this year's King of the Steel City Tournament looking a little, I guess you could call it cold. He has not had that kind of banner year that he has had in the past, but despite everyone's expectations, Griffin Clouds came out, won the King of the Steel City, won the opportunity to face Chuck Tibbs at Hangover one-on-one. -on -one. But then, of course, things all changed the night after Summerfest. Momoa Curry, Guy Fieri, they all came out with very decent claims to Chuck Tibbs' JWF Championship, which, of course, led to the Fatal 4-Way this Sunday. And you know what, Sills? 
I understand that Griffin Clouds, he deserves his shot. He deserves to get a shot at the championship. And honestly, my decision might have hampered some of his odds a little bit. I'll, I'll be the first to admit that I'm not perfect. But Griffin Clouds, I think, is due for an upswing. I think that he is finally within grasp of recapturing that glory that he once knew. And he looks like he's going to fight for it. That's right, and Griffin is in our ring right now, and I think he has a response to those three men in that match and to make himself m known ahead of his next JWF Championship opportunity. Let's have a listen. You know, it was just about three years ago now, I stepped into this ring and I defended my JWF World Heavyweight Championship and I lost. And I don't have any aspersions about that. I, I know I wasn't the better man that night. And ever since then, I've been having to scratch and claw my way back to the top from the very bottom. And this Sunday, for the first time in three years, I get my shot at the JWF Championship once again. And don't think that I am going to take that lightly. But it certainly seems like the rest of the JWF universe is. It seems like the focus has been pulled away from me to my opponents. You know what? Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. It's fine. Guy Fieri, Momoa Curry, Chuck Tibbs, They've been big names in the JWF all year, and they've all fought each other at some point or another. And here I come in. Nothing. No, no good track record for this year, having lost everything that I had built up again, and I just haven't been in contention. I've either been losing matches in tag teams or helping out with my brother. I know that it was a shock to everybody when I became king of the Steel City. But there's a funny thing, it wasn't a shock to me. I knew I deserved that spot because I'll be honest with you, I've watched wrestling my entire life and to me, I always much preferred seeing that little guy come out victorious. I mean, no offense to Momoa Curry, but I'd rather see the little guy win. And you know something, Chuck Tibbs, Detective, you used to be the little guy. You did. I know that's what you're thinking. You're the little guy right now, but not anymore. You used to be that underdog, but ever since you won that title, something in you has changed. You are no longer the underdog. You are no longer the little guy that everybody wants to see win. You, Chuck Tibbs? are exactly what you rallied against your entire career now. And it is all because of that. Oh, Tibbs, the music of Guy Fieri, the king of Flavortown himself, the man Griffin Clouds, defeated to become the king of the Steel City, coming out to the ring, and Guy Fieri, he looks pissed, Tibbs. Absolutely, Sills. It doesn't look like he's... <laughs> It doesn't look like he's going to be one to stay silent after all of that. Okay, okay, okay. Look, Griffin, Griffin, I get it. Y you know something? I find myself rooting for the little guy all the time, too. I mean, everyone loves to see a great underdog story. Rudy, a dodgeball. They're great stories. But at the end of the day, those stories are fairy tales. There's a reason why the little guys are on the bottom, and it's because that's where they deserve to be. Hell, I might be a big man, but I used to be a little guy, an underdog, sitting at the bottom waiting for my story to begin. And then one day, I realized, you gotta make a choice in life. Griff, you gotta make a choice. You can sit here and be that little guy, be that punk at the bottom who thinks one day it'll be my time. Or you can stand up, say enough is enough, and decide to be the big dog on campus. And I did exactly that. So this Sunday, I look forward to putting you back 
in your place at the bottom of the barrel in taking the JWF Championship because for once in my life, I am the big man here in the JWF. And if I've learned anything, it's that big men get titles. And if you've got a problem with that, you can fuck. Oh, Tibbs, there it is, the music of your son, Chuck Tibbs. And you know there's been an attitude change in Chuck lately, and I don't think he's happy hearing all this. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but uh, why are you two out here right now? Honestly, please tell me. Oh, I know what it is. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to make this match all about you two. Just like Momoa Curry tried to make this match all about him. But the truth of the matter is to both of you, this Sunday is gonna be all about Chuck freaking Tibbs. This Sunday is all about how Chuck Tibbs proves himself in that ring finally and without a doubt ever again. I mean, in all honesty, does anybody here truly think that Griffin Clouds is walking away with the title Sunday? Huh? Huh? No? Okay. Oh, oh, how about Guy Fieri? The food guy, yeah. Literally, diners, drive-ins, and dives. That guy. That, that guy. He's gonna become your JWF champion. Do you think so? Oh, I didn't think so either. <laughs> you see, uh, you two are uh, what we in the business like to call filler. You're there because my father wanted to make things interesting, and he did. He did by adding you guys, trust me. It was a great idea. He really wanted to make me prove myself, but that's the thing, guys. The truth is, neither of you are championship material. And uh, you're only going to be out there so I can prove myself. <laughs> Hell, Momoa Curry isn't even championship material anymore. <laughs> this Sunday, it's all going to be the story of Chuck Tibbs going to that ring, beating the three of you guys, and proving himself as the JWF champion once and for all. Because, uh... That is what a Tibbs does. And, well, all right, gentlemen, if uh, you got a problem with that, you don't have to wait until Sunday. You could do this right now. Well, Tibbs, strong fighting words from your son, and who, unfortunately, they are not paying off as Guy Fieri just levels Chuck going after him with those vicious punches. Ooh, but before he can continue, Griffin jumping in, laying out Guy Fieri with a series of vicious shots, and then, oh, big knee to the skull, and what the hell? Look at this, Chuck Tibbs. Chuck is leaving the ring. What's he thinking? I don't know, Sills. It looks like once the brawl broke out, Chuck's trying to save his strength or something. That's right, you see Guy Fieri getting the advantage, going for that massive knockout punch, but ooh, Griffin avoids it at the last minute. It's a beautiful neck breaker, taking down the proverbial big man. And Tibbs, let me tell you something, I think if Guy had connected with that knockout punch, it could have all been over for Griffin. Might have broke its jaw. It could have been terrible. That is a powerful punch, Sills. That's right, and look at Chuck on the outside. Chuck is just laughing at them. I mean... Tibbs, do you think this was all part of his plan? Get those two to attack each other, to weaken each other. Very well could have been, Sills. It's not a bad plan either. If you can uh, if you can insult your opponents enough that they eventually start fighting each other instead of you, you can walk away scot-free. That's right. You see Chuck just laughing, putting that belt over his shoulder and turning to walk away. But, oh, unfortunately, walks into a massive spear from Momoa Curry, the god of the JWF, in the final entrant into that final fa for fatal four-way match. He has made his presence known, Tibbs. And let's be honest, Momoa has the most riding on this out of all of those competitors. Momoa says if he doesn't win this Sunday, he's never challenging for a title ever again. That's right, Sills, and that is all that Momoa Curry has said. He has stayed silent after that. He is letting his actions speak for him instead of his words. That's right, and it looks like that action just laid out the JWF champion with just one spear. And look at the ring. Griffin and God, they've stopped fighting. They are just staring down at Momoa, and you know he is definitely going to be the man with a target on his back this Sunday at JWF Hangover.
Absolutely, Stills. We've got a hell of a card, a hell of a pay-per-view coming this Sunday. You need to watch it. If this doesn't sell you, nothing will. That's right. In addition to that, we found out earlier tonight we are going to see the Dylan face off against Ghazi. The next in the best of seven series, Hollywood Holcher versus Danny Roanoke in a steel cage. The Rising Suns versus the Wild-Eyed Southern Boys. And then, of course, War Wizard versus AJ Steele. It's going to be an absolutely can't-miss pay-per-view this Sunday on the Fight Boys YouTube channel. That's right, Sills. Make sure you tune in. Don't miss it. And why don't they buy our shit? That's right, Tibbs. Go to merch.lo to purebs.com. We got shirts for the VWO. We got shirts for Chuck Tibbs. We got shirts for our tag team champions, the Rising Sun. They all have merchandise available at merch.lo of purebs.com, Tibbs. Well, it absolutely, Sills. You can buy merch for just about anybody, including yours truly. That's right, and in addition to that, make sure to support us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash a load of BS gets you access to tons of exclusive content, including some older episodes of JWF Monday Night War, narrated by our former tag team champions, Blake Tanner and Scotty Moore. It's a hell of a time waiting on you at Patreon.com slash a load of BS. If only they'd say buried. That's right, but until next time, he's been Captain Tip. I've been Silver Spoon, and this has been JWF Monday Night Ignition, and we will see you next time.